Hey everyone, my name is Chris and today I'm going to be giving you a full build recap of my 2005 E46 325XI wagon. This thing was a total piece of junk when we first bought it and it was only $900 so it was a really good deal but as you can see it had a belt that flew off, we had to tow it home, I found more damage underneath the car as well so this thing was definitely an adventure to build and restore but I'm so glad that we had the opportunity. If you want to see I have all videos documenting this process in detail so that you can do the same things at home. So check out our YouTube channel, but for now, I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the video and I'm gonna give you a little bit of brief commentary as you're watching to give you a little bit more background info. But I hope you enjoy. Go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we'll go ahead and get right into it. Now, if you didn't see right there, the car was involved in a little accident. It looks like someone had sideswiped it, starting with the fender. And so that was my first priority after I bought the car was I wanted to make sure that the whole body was straight. So we went to the junkyard, we bought an OEM fender from another car, and then we went ahead and pulled the one off of our car to see if there was any damage underneath. And then we test fitted the new fender to make sure all the body lines were perfect, and they did, they looked great. So this was huge motivation for this build, and I just called this thing my zebra car because it kind of looked like a zebra colors while it was unpainted. Now I wanted to get the car driving and since the belt had been thrown off and the pulley was basically falling apart it wouldn't even move from my front driveway. So that was the first thing that we decided to do was fix the pulley system. I bought an entire kit of parts to just replace everything and uh, once we got it off we could see just how bad the damage was. Now once those belts were running smoothly, my next priority was to scan the car and see exactly what codes it had. It had a few codes for misfires and some Vanos codes, but I figured this was because the oil in it was so old and so dirty that I went ahead and did an oil change immediately so that the car wouldn't be running bad. And then we went to doing the window regulators. So I bought all four brand new window regulators from Amazon for a fraction of the price of brand new ones. And then it, we went on a mission to basically change all of them. So that went well and now all of our windows work great. Then I decided that I wanted to try my hand at key cloning. So I bought an AK90 programmer, the tool that you need to do this, and I went ahead and pulled the EWS out and made a fresh key for myself, one that was able to lock and unlock the door. And then after that, we moved on to uh, pulling the exhaust down for the first time and snapping all of the bolts on it, which was no fun to uh, take out in a second, which you'll see. Uh, but we did this because we wanted to change the center support bearing, which we knew was bad. And turns out that the U-joint was bad as well, which we actually change out later. Getting these exhaust studs out was no joke. It took a lot of patience and a lot of drilling, but soon enough we got them out and that was a super clean job that let us use bolts and that way we won't have this problem again. Now the next thing that I wanted to tackle on this car was fixing the two most common leaks which are the valve cover gasket and the oil filter stand gasket for the M54. Both of these had failed on my car so they were leaking oil just all over the engine creating a huge mess. So that's what I decided to do and you know it wasn't as hard as you'd think, it was pretty easy and you don't even have to remove the intake manifold to do the oil filter stand. And 
and now we move on to the M54's main weakness, the cooling system. It's not really the cooling system that's a weak point, it's really the fact that because this is an all aluminum motor, the first time that you overheat it, it's gonna warp the block and probably warp the head as well. You're gonna suffer head gasket failure really easily if you ever overheat this engine. So the best thing that you can do is take care of your cooling system before it fails. And I'd recommend doing this by changing out your water pump, your thermostat, and also the radiator and all the hoses that look like they're old or original because you don't want any of those to pop and cause your car to overheat. Now here we're taking off the exhaust again because we have to replace the drive shaft for the car. We knew that this U-joint was bad, so we replaced it and then we moved on to doing the rear subframe. So we went ahead and pulled the rear subframe completely down. We wanted to check the chassis for cracks or rust or any sort of damage. And while we had it down, we were also gonna change the subframe bushings, the differential bushings, and the rear trailing arm bushings because all those looked worn. So that was a really important piece of the build was getting the rear end 100% squared away. And while we had everything apart, we took the opportunity to paint over some stuff and remove any surface rust to make everything just look brand new. We went with PowerFlex bushings because not only are they much easier to install than the factory rubber bushings, but the polyurethane is going to last a ton longer and it's going to provide much better cushioning for the subframe for many years to come. So with the rear subframe in place, we turned our attention to the front end of the car because now it was time to work on the front suspension as well as replacing the front axles. And also since we're down there, we might as well replace the oil pan gasket and all the associated seals as well. So that was a great upgrade because now we could make the car leak free and I think the axles were making noise before. So it was really important that we replace them while we were in there.
Now after we cleaned everything as good as possible, it was time to do the best mod that you have to do on your M54 motor and that is the oil pump nut. You want to get one that has a safety wire just like this because it's so common for this nut to back out on its own and then your car would lose oil pressure and it would completely destroy the motor. So while we had the oil pan off, it was definitely time to do that and then we started reassembling everything and getting it ready to get it back on the road with all new parts by the way. Along with the new control arms, we decided to do PowerFlex front control arm bushings just because it gives you that little extra added precision and steering feel which you don't get from the factory rubber bushings. Moving back to the rear end of the car, I noticed that the rear struts were blown, so I went and grabbed some new ones off of eBay, as well as some Miley brand heavy duty rear strut mounts, which are a super common failure point because of the construction of the factory ones. But once we did that, we gave the car an alignment and then it was time to give it its first real drive. So now that the car was mechanically sound, it was time to turn our attention back to the cosmetics. And the first thing that we wanted to do was paint this ugly white fender. So I went ahead and prepped it and I set up a little paint studio in my garage. I'll be, this is not the best way to do things. And I definitely want to invest in a better painting setup in the future. But I think I did pretty well for my first time with a paint gun. And you should definitely check out that video because I had a fun time doing this. One other thing that we decided to do was a full transmission service because it was leaking from the shifter selector rod seal, I think it's called. And while we were there, we also did the transmission filter, the fluids, and then also the transmission bushing. So took care of all that and it is fully serviced. Now I was at the junkyard recently and I found these really sick Xenon headlights that were facelifts so they would fit my car. All we had to do was a little bit of coating and some polishing and they totally transformed the front look of the car. Now I also grabbed some Euro corner and side marker lights and those totally transformed the look of the front end. And then to match in the rear, I got some tinting film that redded out the amber corner lights and it definitely made it look better as well. So now we're in the final stages of building this car and I finally gave it its first wash because we're gonna get ready to fully buff the car with some Meguiar's compound. And we also have to do a little bit of paint correction on the fender that we painted because there were some imperfections in it and we actually went down to the base coat in one area but you really can't tell once it's all said and done but otherwise the car came out looking so good it just has such a deep black color now all over and looks totally like a different car. Now the last piece of the puzzle was going to be replacing the headliner, something that fails all too commonly on BMWs that are, you know, left outside in the sun and stuff. But we went with a new looking suede material. So instead of the factory headliner, we went with some suede and it came out just looking so great. Really made the car look newer from the inside.
So that's going to conclude our build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you love BMWs as much as I do, consider subscribing to the channel and smashing that like button down below. Leave me a comment to let me know that you enjoyed this build series. And hopefully we'll see a lot more cars like this one come through here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.